Time now for a closer look at some of the big stories of the week with the Inside Utah Politics panel. This week we have House Minority Leader Brian King and former Speaker of the House Greg Hughes. Gentlemen, good to have you on the show. Thanks for being here. Thanks, Tom. Good to be here. Let's start off with the race for Senate. Uh, Brian, you were at the uh, state convention for the Democrats. You saw it happen firsthand, bypassing nominating a Democratic candidate for Senate, going instead in favor of independent Evan McMullen. Your thoughts on that? well-qualified Democratic uh, candidate, too. Kel Weston has a great resume. He's a good guy, remarkable guy. He ran for Congress in 2020. This was a gut-wrenching decision, I think, for myself as a delegate and for most of the delegates there. And I think it's a measure of the extent to which there is alarm and real concern about sending Mike Lee back to Congress again in light of his clear behavior undermining the Constitution, seeking to set aside uh, the results of a free and fair election that we had uh, in 2020. And when he, we saw that he was working so hard to do anything that he could to support Donald Trump and ignore the constitutional requirements, ignore his oath of office, and uh, ignore the results of the elections, I think there are many, many Democrats who say, we've got to do what's necessary to get this guy out of office. And there was a feeling, a calculation, based on polling, based on a lot of information, that uh, Evan McMullen was the guy who was in a much better position to do that than Kale, despite Kale's good qualifications as a candidate. Greg, let's bring you in real quick. First, weigh in on what the representative said about the senator and his efforts that we saw through the text messages and the connection to former President Trump. It's a nothing burger. I'm going to tell you there was chaos after the election. There were concerns about uh, what had happened, how that election occurred, how it rolled out. The text messages reflect that concern, looking into issues. Uh, the senator voted to con confirm the Electoral College vote. Uh, it, it's all consistent with what he shared, but he was concerned, and he was looking at the constitutional uh, routes and making sure that everything was done correctly. I don't have. I, I think if you want to try to beat him, I'm, that's the only thing I can think of that you can make something out of that. But there's nothing there. Uh, let's dig a little deeper into actually what took place at the convention, Representative. You said you voted to nominate Cal Weston. That uh, didn't uh, happen. What does that say about the state of the Democratic Party right now that they are putting their weight behind an independent and bypassing their own candidate? Well, that's, the, that's why it was a tough vote. I really wrung my hand about that, and I didn't publicly come out one way or the other. I personally voted uh, in favor of keeping Cal as our candidate. But listen, that was because I, I think that Quite honestly, even though the polling showed that Evan McMullen has an excellent shot at dislodging Mike Lee, it's so hard to dislodge an incumbent. I think that in the end, it's less likely that he's going to win than Mike Lee's going to win. And so I thought, this is too big a gamble to make me feel comfortable. Because I think when you bypass a good quality candidate like Kale, unless you're certain that by joining forces with independents and uh, more pragmatic or more independent Republicans, to get rid of someone as loathsome as Mike Lee in terms of an elected official in the Senate, unless you are really confident you're going to be able to do it, you're doing more party to the, you're doing more damage to the party, and that's what I was concerned about. And I am concerned that, in fact, uh, this move signals too clearly to the people of the state of Utah the weakness of Utah's Democratic Party. But it's not like people yeah. know right now that. It's not like people think right now that Democrats can win a statewide office. I mean, it's been over two decades since a Democrat has won a statewide office. Yeah, you have to go back to the 90s, yeah. uh, 90s for that. Yeah. Uh, I want to dig a little deeper into that in a minute, but first, Greg, your thoughts on what this says about the state of the Democratic Party? Oh, well, it's, I, th I think Brian was, uh, I, he's honest about it, but it's, it, let me say, let's just say that uh, Democrats are unelectable. Uh, they know it. Statewide, there's no way that party platform, what the Democrats are doing nationally in the state, they know clearly that people will not vote for a Democrat. And so they're trying to glob onto a candidate that they think has a chance uh, in a coming election. But again, uh, let's not forget what that means. That means in the mid and long view, there are people in Utah who believe that they're Democrats. They like and subscribe to the Democrat uh, platform. Uh, they have no candidate. Uh, they have no, they have no, they, they literally kicked the candidate off the ballot. It wasn't like it was unfilled and they needed to find someone to get behind. They removed their Democrat nominee for the Senate, off of the uh, off of the ballot, uh, so that they could support someone else. Okay, and I, th I think there's a there's a lot you can read into that, and that is that Democrats are not uh, electable. And that's look, I'm not a Democrat. I don't even subscribe to that platform. But I believe in a team. I believe it's a two party rule in terms of two 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 parties uh, that in that are major parties in our our governance model. 
how in the world I could I could do a better job being a Democrat Party chair than what they're doing right now to that party. Rep Representative, I want to ask you this: What impact? I got to respond to that. <laughs> okay, go ahead. It is absolutely <laughs> untrue to say Democrats are unelectable. What you've got here well, is statewide the wide right now. Well, what you've got here is a, is a con we would not just because that we haven't won a statewide election in over two decades doesn't mean we wouldn't have put up a good, strong candidate like Cale Weston for a statewide office. We did it in 2020 with Chris Peterson, great candidate for governor. What we have here is a convergence of circumstances that makes not just Democrats, but many, many people feel strongly in this state. We've got to do what's necessary to m knock Mike Lee out because he is literally a threat to our constitution and to our governing system. And we are taking desperate measures to make sure that we do everything we can I, to have that happen. I want to hit on one point, though, with you, Representative. What impact is this going to have down ballot? Because that was a big concern within the Democratic Party. The vote at convention, I believe, was 57-43. So you have a pretty sizable amount of Democrats who are not behind this move. Are they going to be energized in November? Yeah, it's a great question. It was one of the main concerns I had, Glenn. And I think that one of the things that I'm most grateful for, Cale Weston is a first-rate, classy person. He immediately after this vote said, look, this isn't the vote that I wanted. It isn't what I was hoping would happen. But I'm voting for and supporting Democrats. And I'm voting for getting rid of Mike Lee out of the U.S. Senate. So the fact that Cale has come together so quickly and in such a genuine, authentic way to say, let's work together, both as supporting of Democrats and as getting Mike Lee out of office to make th these things come to pass in this coming election. I think that helps a great deal to heal the wounds within the Democratic Party. It, uh, Greg, w here's what I want to get out of you real quick. Yeah. When you take a look at Democrats getting behind Evan McMullen, who prior to moving independent was a Republican, a lot of his views that he talks about on this show are considered conservative. So are Democrats, when they get to know him, really going to get behind him? Well, I, I don't think they'd support him or kick their candidate off the ballot if they didn't think he was Democrat enough. But I think it's the worst built Trojan horse you've ever seen. I mean, it's got slats inside. You see every Democrat inside this Trojan horse that's called Evan McMullen. He's a Democrat candidate, and he's the one they think that if they don't call him a Democrat, he might be able to win. The sad part here is that the Democrat Party in Utah is really just now become a regional party. It's strong in Salt Lake City, it's strong in Park City, Moab, but they're giving up. They're giving up and that down, down ballot question you asked is absolutely relevant. Do you have Democrats that want to be able to get behind good candidates? And it might not be for this election cycle, but how do you build and have a strong two-party system in this state if you're kicking your own candidates off your ballot? So I, I, I think Evan McMullen uh, is attractive to Democrats because he's appealing to Democrats. But that doesn't make uh, it right. It doesn't make the Democrat Party strong. And I'm a Republican that doesn't think that everyone should just crowd into the Republican Party and pretend they're just one party. I think we do well to have a two-party state or mm -hmm. two-party uh, representative uh, governance. So Glenn, representative, Glenn, when, we, when we take a look, when we take a look at uh, <laughs> the statewide performance by Democrats over the last um, few decades, they have struggled. You mentioned Chris Peterson, who was widely seen as a solid candidate, yeah. but still only getting anywhere from upper 20 into the 30% statewide. So what does the party have to do to reach more Utahns and gain more support? Well, we have to do a better job of putting uh, good messaging together. We have to continue to put up good candidates. And in this situation involving Evan McMullen and uh, Kale Weston, I think that my friend Greg Hughes protesteth too much. <laughs> I think what we see is some concern and nervousness on the part of Republicans across the state that Evan McMullen may very well present a credible threat in terms of getting more votes than Mike Lee when uh, November comes around. Rest assured, Greg is not concerned first and foremost about the health of Utah's Democratic Party. I do like a two-party uh, system, I do. Uh, let, let's talk about that a little bit more though because right now polling indicates that Senator Lee is very strong within the party. That obviously bodes well for him in a primary scenario, but it does show some potential vulnerability with the statewide electorate. So, Greg, how do you see that general matchup playing out? Look, just if you took the, the craziness going on in this country and in, the, in our state and took that, put that aside, forget the 11% inflation, forget $4 gasoline per gallon, forget about not having a southern border, forget our military in Afghanistan and all the disasters happening and the, and the, and the unrest. Off your elections, if one party wins the, the White House, then the midterm election goes the other way. It's just historical. Mm -hmm. So inherently, you would see re Republicans do very well in a midterm when the Democrats win the White House. 
Now add all the things I just described, and you're going to see a, a very large swing, okay. I believe, I the Republicans' way. So I okay. think that bodes very well for the senator. I think Senator Lee uh, leads that kind of sentiment, conservative uh, approach to governance, that, uh, and even common sense at this point, governance, that will do very well in the okay. state. Uh, Representative, wrap us up real quick. Well, I just think that what you're going to see is a, a, some more information coming out about January 6th that may very well make Mike Lee look, more, w look worse than he looks right now. So I think we're going to see a close race. I'm keeping my fingers crossed that Evan McMullen can knock out Mike Lee. And if it isn't Evan McMullen, that it's Becky Edwards or Ali Isom in the primary in June. I'd love to see that. All right. I don't care so much as I want to see Mike Lee out of office. Going to have to wrap it up on that note. Gentlemen, thanks so much. We got through one whole one topic issue. today. <laughs> Big one, though. Big one. Hey, are you on Twitter again yet, Greg, so I can tag you on this? Nah, I, now that Elon's running things, I might get on there again, you know, now that, I'm, now that free speech <laughs> is alive. All right, alive. gentlemen. <laughs> thanks for being here. Stay with us. We'll be right back with more Inside Utah Politics thanks, right after the break.